We need to be very cautious about these kind of things because what is it that we ourselves understand, first of all, before we're exporting that to others? Guru Maharaj would quote different uh, maxims. Some of them come to mind. And I don't mean to be harsh or cruel, but just to sort of invoke his divine concepts first and then work from there. And one thing he said many times was, uh, you know, oil your own machine. Again, that's, he didn't create that statement. He's quoting a, an aphorism. Oil your own machine means concentrate on yourself. Many times he liked to quote uh, this German scholar who read Bhagavad Gita and came to the conclusion that the message of Bhagavad Gita is not to quarrel with the environment. Right? Like we hear things early on, just one sample of that would be the famous sloka, Matra sparsha stu kontea shitoshna sukadukada agma payano nityas tam titikshasva bharata, where Krishna is comparing karmic circumstances to environmental conditions, seasonal changes, temperatures. And, and what I like to say is a footnote that. Even as devotees or those somewhat familiar with uh, what's presented in Bhagavad Gita, you know, we can think, oh, we, we've heard that, we know that. That's in the second chapter, we've heard that many times. But what I would remind even the devotees of is that if Krishna gives a particular example, we can assume it's a very good one. <laughs> it's not like he's saying, oh, I should have said, or why didn't I think of that? No. He who's, we hear in other places, upadrastanu mantacha bharta bhokta maheshwara paramat meti chapyukto dehesman pur. He's as the paramatma in everyone. So I would think, if he's going to give an example, it must be a really good one. Right? He has an idea of what would be an example that most simple-hearted people could find tenable or acceptable. And I'm saying this indirectly that I guess I'm saying it's Krishna's job to do that. <laughs> and he does his job very well. Uh, Although he, we can say he's passive in this context or non-interfering, but still conscience, inner suggestion, all of these things are there. We all know by our own practical experience in life, in living, everyone has an inner dialogue that's going on. Right? It's sort of you know, a dialogue with the self. A dialogue with ourselves, you could call it, all day. In fact, it would be more rare the moments when that dialogue is not obvious. But there's, people are always, there's a void, you're talking to yourself inside, making observations about life, circumstances, from many different perspectives, right? So, within that, the suggestion is also coming, what we can call conscience, from a plane, how to proceed, what's right, what's wrong. Uh -huh. But referring back to that sloka, which ends on the expression, Tams titik shasva bharata, saying, what do you do in the world with seasonal changes, environmental conditions? You tolerate it. Right now we have the AC on because it's hot here. You make some adjustment, but basically saying you have to tolerate those conditions. So 
That's what's indicated there. Guru Maharaj is saying that scholar's summary interpretation, and again, it was an observation. His summary observation was, oh, the message is don't quarrel with the environment, but you can adjust yourself. Right? And so that's back to oil your own machine. 